I love listening to the varied thoughts of the day and I'm amazed how often there are similar threads that run through them. I've been touched by several of them reflecting on the peace they have experienced during lockdown. Sandy mentioned how quiet it was with no traffic, allowing him to appreciate the bird song like never before. John recalled his long walks, enjoying the stillness and trying to identify the sort of birds he was hearing. Recently, the Reverend Anne revels in memories of her beloved Balater, especially the beauty and stillness she experienced sitting in the green garden. In our phone calls, many of you have remarked to me about the peace you've noticed since everything came to a standstill, particularly those of you who walk in the early morning. It almost seemed eerie and strange at first, like something out of an apocalyptic film. Then, as we slowed down and adjusted, and as spring slipped in quietly, I think you'll agree the peace and quiet became a soothing balm to our souls. Perhaps it's what many of us needed to slow down and jump off the busy merry-go-round of modern life. We've had time to listen to the sound of silence, time to listen to the bird's song, time to listen to each other, and time to listen to God, to his still small voice that you can only really hear when you take time out with him. We had almost 11 weeks of an external peace that perhaps we've never quite experienced before in our lifetime and for many it has become a never to be forgotten treasure. But external peace is fragile and temporary and even in lockdown many have not been able to experience it as they struggle to homeschool and work from home simultaneously or perhaps in a small house with a big family, or those working in a busy hospital ward, intensive care or in a care home, those living in an atmosphere of angry words or worse. It's far from peaceful in these settings. As we move slowly from full lockdown through the phases of a gradual lifting of restrictions, I'm sure you've all been noticing the change in background noise. Once more, we can detect the increasingly loud hum of traffic, the bin lorries thankfully resuming their rounds and long roadside grass being cut. The fragile external piece is becoming more elusive. We all have a desire for peace in our lives. How can we find lasting peace, especially as we start to emerge from our cocoons of relative safety to an uncertain tomorrow. No one knew more about the uncertainty of the future than the early followers of Jesus as they gathered in that locked room just a few days after Jesus was crucified. It may have been quiet and hidden away, but there was no peace in their hearts, only fear. As always, Jesus knew their needs, and I love how the very first words he said to them were, Peace be with you. He even repeated himself, Peace be with you, or Shalom, as he may have said. We learned in youth church recently that this is a well-known greeting in the Jewish community in Israel, even today. Interestingly, though, this is the first time we read in the Bible about Jesus using this particular greeting in the Gospels. But I believe there's a reason for this. By his death on the cross, he had made it possible to have an inner peace with God, a true shalom. He wanted them to be sure of that. And as Christians, we too can have that same peace with God. Not an elusive external peace that we can't hold on to, but an internal one that cannot be taken away from us. Listen to two of the promises about peace Jesus made to his followers and is saying to us today. In me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, 
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We need to take these words to heart as we watch the peace the world gives slipping through our fingers like sand. Instead, we can know peace with God as well as the peace of God. We have one particular Christmas card from a dear friend that I've kept for years and I read from time to time. It is so relevant, especially just now. It has in it a quote from the late Billy Graham. It says, Christ alone can bring lasting peace, peace with God, peace among men and nations, and peace within our hearts. The answer to our search for peace is found through our Prince of Peace, Jesus. <clears throat> Many are feeling anxious about the future just now. One of my favourite verses is in Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything. In everything, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the peace Jesus bought for us through his death, peace that passes understanding. Let's not keep that peace to ourselves, but share it with others we meet, who will also be longing for peace in the uncertain days ahead. I'm going to finish with the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi that we have sung together so often in church in days gone by and that I hope we'll sing together in the not too distant future. Let's pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Amen.